This is the Planet Rygate podcast. Hello, I'm Peter Stewart, episode 17 for January the 6th, 2024. Into 2024 on the Planet Rygate podcast. And we kick off the new year with the trip around the recent Rygate sustainability market. We hear from various stall holders, their stories, their items for sale and how you can get your hands on them. Also in today's episode, sewage has leaked across a local footpath. we tell you more about that. And news on the loos and the cafes in Priory and Memorial Park. Pilgrim Brewery in West Street plans to expand. More charges at Gatwick that will affect you if you pick up and drop off not only from the airport, but also the train station as well, of course. Local OBE success and sporting success as well. A new restaurant coming to Rygate. And in the Good Time Guide, salsa lessons, auditions for Sister Act and the start of a new local beekeepers course which sounds quite fun as well. Plus our weather almanac, and we've had an awful lot of weather this last seven or ten days, haven't we? Local heroes in the planet Rygate stars, and our new feature, yes, everybody, a new feature called Rygate Roulette. More on that a little bit later on. And our 60-second soundscape from Gatton Park. Yeah, I'm really pleased with the Rygate Roulette. It's not presented by me, it's presented by somebody else. Stay tuned for more on that. But first of all, as we always do, let's take a look at some of the communication, some of the correspondence that I've had over the last uh, few weeks. I hope you managed, incidentally, to have a fantastic new year and also a brilliant Christmas, if you celebrate that, and hopefully you're able at some stage to listen to our pantomime specials over Christmas and New Year. If not, go back and listen to episodes 15 and 16 behind the scenes at the Red Hill Pantomime in the Big Top in Memorial Park, hearing from the people who made that decision to still put it on, even though the Harlequin Theatre itself had gone to rack and ruin, if you pardon the phrase. I mean... Obviously, the Harlequin is still there, but it has been closed down for, what, several weeks now? Possibly a couple of months, isn't it, by now? Absolutely. So they're still waiting for those investigations uh, to occur so they can work out exactly what's going on there. So, as I say, hopefully you're able to listen to our special episodes over Christmas and New Year, hearing from the councillors who made the decision to still put the panto on, also the crew and the cast as well of Beauty and the beast and if you manage to get along to the show itself hope you enjoyed that too so some communications um here we go i'm sure i'm one of the many who are contacting you to get involved on your great new podcast says nikki and you know what we've been in touch with nikki and our chat with her is going to be a little bit later on in 2024 wayne has written to us we'd love to be involved in the planet rygate podcast so again we've uh, set up something with wayne as well so if you know someone called wayne then maybe they'll be featured on the planet rygate podcast in the next few weeks and rebecca says it all sounds fantastic what a great idea so if uh, you have been listening to the planet rygate podcast over the last several weeks over the last several months, of course. Thank you so much indeed for the loan of your ears. Thank you very much indeed for listening. Hope you managed to perhaps spread the word over the course of Christmas and New Period. Uh, maybe you had some friends or family round. Maybe you were at a, a cheese and wine or a buffet or something like that. Maybe you had a dinner party. Maybe there was New Year's Eve. Maybe you were, maybe you were stuck for something to talk about with somebody and you said to them, have you heard about this new podcast? And if you have... Thank you very much indeed for passing that on over the last few weeks. If you haven't, please consider doing it for 2024. Heck, it could be one of your New Year's resolutions, couldn't it? Yeah, on the way, we've got Rygate Roulette, our brand new feature with our brand new co-presenter for the Planet Rygate podcast. Our weather almanac is on the way and our 60-second soundscape from Gatton Park to end the show. But... If you do want to tell people about the show, just out of our good time guide, let me tell you this. Email hello at theplanetrygatepodcast.com. Find out more at theplanetrygatepodcast.com. Leave a text or voice message on WhatsApp 
07917-874-572. Follow us on Facebook, The Planet Rygate Podcast. Find us, subscribe and leave a review on your favourite podcast app. Support us at buymeacoffee.com slash the Planet Rygate Podcast. The Good Time Guide. Things to do and places to go on the Planet Rygate Podcast. Yeah, the Good Time Guide's our Planet Rygate planner for the next seven days or so. And if you want to mention for your charity or non-profit event, let us know about it. You can fill out the form you'll find on the Planet Rygate Podcast. Dot com. And if yours is a business, then get in touch anyway, and uh, we'll have your people talk to our people, as it were. So do get in touch with us, either which way. Slim pickings, it has to be said, not a huge amount going on, because I guess people are still exhausted from all those pre-Christmas and New Year events. But we can tell you that today there's Christmas tree recycling via Brock Parish Council. In partnership with Betchworth Parish Council and Buckland Parish Council as well. Yeah, the, the three B's getting involved. Christmas tree recycling. Leave your tree opposite the Wheelers Lane, Wellhouse Lane Junction um, all the way through until 6pm Saturday night, the 6th of January. And it'll be collected and disposed of there. So uh, that's the first thing. Kind of a, a bit of a throwback, isn't it, to, to what, of course has been a fantastic Christmas and New Year period for me. Hopefully it was for you as well. My Boxing Day was particularly good. (laughs) Uh, Bletching... Sorry, that was a bit Sid James, wasn't it? I do apologise. Bletchingley's first locally performed pantomime in many years is uh, getting underway Saturday night at uh, Bletchingley Village Hall uh, at 2 o'clock and 7 o'clock. Tickets and info at bletchfest.org. It's called After the Beanstalk, and tickets just £3. Tomorrow, Sunday, Sister Act auditions. Yeah, be part of a big musical at the Harlequin Theatre in Red Hill, or indeed somewhere else. Uh, Referring you back to what I mentioned a few minutes ago. Auditions on Sunday for this fabulous musical. Everything you need to know is on the link at bowproductions.com. Now, it's, it is a bit difficult to find because actually the website for Bow Productions is, is a little bit odd. So let me give you that again. It's Bow Productions, B O W Productions, dot go daddy sites dot com. Yeah, I told you it was a bit awkward. Anyway, the show itself is going to be the 29th of May to the 1st of June 2024. So maybe you want to put that in your diary to go along and see Sister Act, the auditions of which are happening tomorrow, Sunday. So if you've got someone in the family that likes a bit of singing and dancing and clapping and so on, then why don't you check out that website and get them along there? Monday. Uh, Did you know that at Donnings, they've got two 66-plus sessions every Monday and Thursday? Yeah, their senior club sessions are bookable online or on the reception desk. The sessions cost £5 for non-members and is included in the Better Health Senior Membership. So that's at Donnings Leisure Centre for 66 plus. Uh, You can go along down there and you can have some keep fit lessons. Now, when this came up, you know, sometimes you can think to yourself, I've been meaning to look that up for a long time. Well, I have known about Donnings Leisure Centre probably since it was built. Right. And I've always meant to look up why Donnings. I mean, forgive me if if, if you know this, then, then get in touch. Because I don't know of any other area that is called Donnings. Is it an area that Donnings refers to? Is it a place? Is it a thing? I did some basic Google research. I couldn't find a thing about it. So do you know why Donnings is called Donnings? Um, Let me know if you do. And uh, I'll I'll share it on the Planet Rygate podcast in the future. 
Now, if you want to try something new in 2024, learn to salsa with various courses for beginners in Red Hill, Mondays and Thursdays. And of course, we're talking about next Monday. No partner or previous experience is needed. Limited spaces, but you can contact High Five Salsa to check availability. So it's Cuban Salsa, Mondays in Red Hill, five-week beginners in a foundations course. And on Thursdays, it's uh, it's a beginners five-week course also in Red Hill. So essentially, it's the same thing, isn't it? Red Hill, uh, either which way. Uh, Cuban Salsa sounds like fun. Details that you can check out there, as I say, if you want some more information, High Five Salsa. Wednesday, 5.45 to 8pm, RB Inspire. It's a business networking event at the Town Hall in Rygate. Start and grow your small business with free, yes, ladies and gentlemen, free mentoring and tap into the wealth of expertise in the Rygate and Banstead business community. Buckland and Betchworth Choral Society are looking forward to rehearsals for the Leith Hill Festival, which starts on Wednesday the 10th at 7.45. Not the festival, but their rehearsals. They've got a new conductor there as well. And um, Puccini, Missa di Gloria, is their favourite choral work, so they're really excited to have a chance to sing that again. Uh, See you at uh, Betchworth Village Hall on Wednesday, they say. New members always welcome. Nothing much that we've been able to gather or been told about for Thursday or Friday. So if you've got a good time guide event that is due to be happening this week that you haven't told us about, heck, you've missed out on all this free publicity. But we always take a sneak peek ahead to next Saturday as well, the 13th. So, do you have a New Year's resolution to get fitter and healthier? Well, I kind of do, yes, actually, as it happens. Uh, Do you want to run socially with others or feel better in yourself? The next Rygate Priory AC Couch to 5K nine-week programme starts Saturday the 13th in Priory Park. £17 for the whole course. It's a running plan for absolute beginners to build up a 30 minutes of running and they finish off with a 5k park run together with a slap-up breakfast to reward yourself afterwards. Uh, they got support from the leaders and the participants. You may be surprised what you can achieve, they say. There's an optional lead-in session on Saturday the 6th of January. Uh, so if you can register in time, you can go to full details at RPAC, Rygate Priory Athletics Club, dot org so all the details are there and one more for you the next Rygate beekeepers introduction to beekeeping course is on the 15th of Jan yeah an introductory meeting at their training apiary on the 13th and then the first of the 10 classroom sessions at the Woodhatch Centre in Rygate starting at 7 30 on Monday the 15th and then 10 sessions through to the 25th of March the course fee 195 pounds it includes a whole stack of stuff booklets and notes and all sorts of things four weekly practical training sessions a full-length bee suit loaned for hive inspections if you don't have a full-length bee suit i wonder if you can use uh, just a um, a fencing outfit can you just use a fencing i mean you've got that grilled kind of headpiece and the, no okay and a gift of a jar of honey on your first practical session visit to the apiary no prior experience of beekeeping is required and you know what that sounds great fun doesn't it and uh, if you go along to any of those items don't forget to tell them that you heard about it on the good time guide on the planet rygate podcast okay on the way on this week's show I've got a brand new feature called Rygate Roulette. We've got our 60 second soundscape to end the show as well. That's natural sounds uninterrupted. Got our local heroes mentioned in the planet Rygate stars as well. But also, we've got our guests. Now, just before Christmas, I went to the sustainability market in Rygate. Inside and outside in the courtyard of Rygate Methodist Church. So you're going to be hearing about the stallholders from the stallholders and the organisers in this week's show and next week's show as well on the Planet Rygate podcast. 
Saturday morning, just uh, in the middle of November. In fact, it's a Remembrance Weekend and I'm on the high street, although I am reminded from the sign opposite me at the moment that actually, officially, this little stretch is called the pavement on the high street. And we're just here at uh, Rygate Methodist Church and I'm about to go into the Rygate Sustainability Markets. Oliver is the man who organises this once a month. How's it going? Hello, Peter. Yeah, very well, thank you. We've got a beautiful sunny day today and it's very cold and crisp and it's just a lovely day to host a market in the heart of Rygate. So tell me how it all started. It started because we wanted a, a sustainable presence on the high street. We wanted to be there with like-minded people that were promoting sustainable ways. We've got our own business as well called Nature Reclaimed and we upcycle bottles. And again, we wanted to be on the high street on a regular basis promoting sustainability and educating the customer to show that there's different options than the high street brands that you would find on uh, an everyday high street. You're selling really kind of different things, aren't you? Up and down, I've taken a quick look. We're going to go for a little tour in a few moments' time. You've got a great position here, haven't you? Just opposite Starbucks, not far from Marks and Spencers, yeah. just beside the Bull's Head, we're at uh, Rygate Methodist Church. Yeah. It's really great that people can just kind of wander past and wander in. It's absolutely fantastic. And you get a steady throughput of people all day coming into the market. It's just so lovely to engage with the public of Rygate who are really kind of bought into sustainability and willing to support local producers. It's just, just lovely to have that correspondence with people on a monthly basis. OK, well, let's take a wander in. Let's walk up to Julie, who's... Uh, got a, a company called Ceramic Fitch, hand-thrown ceramics. So uh, just looking at some of her wares that she's got here, she's actually yeah, with a so customer at the moment. Julie's been with us for a few markets now. She's based in Outwood. She has some gorgeous ceramics that's made from recycled clay. Julie, hello, let me come round, if that's OK. I didn't yeah, want to interrupt you with your, uh, with your customers. How is business going? Great. It's really good. I mean, I enjoy spending my time in my studio and I'm making lots and I'm selling lots. So it's, it's a bit solitary, fabulous. isn't it, there? You want to come it out? It is. It is a bit solitary, but I'm on a farm and I'm on a working farm. So there's plenty going on on a working farm. So even though I'm in the studio on my own, but I'm not just in there making my own range, I do classes as well. So I have many people visit me and they come for two-hour sessions and they throw. So I have a good mixture. Yeah. So tell me what it is you do. Describe, because obviously it's audio, obviously it's a, it's a podcast. Describe for me what it is that you've got here. What do you make? Okay, so I am a thrower. I throw on the wheel and I use stoneware clay. Stoneware clay is a good hardy clay to use. It needs a high firing temperature, 1,240 degrees. Everything that I make and everybody that comes for classes and what they make is fine in the dishwasher, microwave, oven, freezer, indoors or outdoors. It's a good hardy everyday use clay. So I throw on the wheel, I make various different shapes. My range is mainly functional tableware and I like things which are multifunctional. I've got items here which are a cake stand and a cheese board one way up and then you flip it over and you use it as a dip and chip on the other side. I've got planters with drainage holes and drip trays all built in one piece. So they're items that you wouldn't normally see on the high street or in commercial brands. I make my own glazes so I can really get a good choice of depth of colour. So everything you see is unique, pretty much everything it can be replaced obviously I'm making it and it can be fairly uniform but particularly the soap dispensers they are all completely unique I let creativity go then I use a certain weight of clay and just see what happens when I get on the wheel these are kind of things that you want to touch actually very and this cup here is that feels really really nice and I'm guessing can I take one of these yeah. these mugs off obviously I'm holding the microphone with one hand but that, that, that it's tactile isn't it it is absolutely and when I'm making the glazes I'll make some which are quite matte and some which are quite shiny so you've got texture this interest going on and these in particular these here which are black they look like black and white or brown and white this is two types of clay so this looks like marble and it's all in the clay body so this isn't a glaze this is two colors of clay checkerboarded together into a ball of clay thrown on the wheel the slurry scraped off at the off the outer edge and it reveals a marble effect so it's, it's quite unique and people can come along to you and actually learn how to do some of this a little bit themselves. And they can come for two hour sessions. They can come in one, two, three or four people. I demonstrate, I talk through the making process, I show people to throw, they get to throw themselves. They make one or two things. At the end of the session they choose their glaze colours. They leave their items with me. I put them through the rest of the process and they come and pick them up in about four or five weeks and take them home and use them and show them off. Julie, tell us how people can get in contact. You must have a, a website where people can see what you're selling. So it's www.ceramicfitch.com 
fitch.com. F-I-T-C-H. Fitch is my maiden name. You've got a prime position here, haven't you? Because I you're do. right inside the front gate. I get to smile and say hello to everyone and greet everyone, as well as everybody coming to see me first. So, yes, I'm very <laughs> lucky. And I'm very thankful to Katie and Ollie for letting me come back so many times. It's a great, great market. Julie, lovely to see you. Thanks very much indeed for talking to us. Let's uh, move on and see who else that we can meet. Let's uh, move up to uh, Rosanna. Hi, Rosanna. How are you doing? Hi, All right. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> so tell me about your business. What's it called? What do you do? So it's Creatively Emmy. So I make handmade baby and children's wear. It all started in lockdown when I was making my um, daughter clothes on my maternity leave. So the idea is you can choose your fabric, you choose your style, and I make it up and deliver it within the local area. Oh, wow. So it's not just kind of off the peg. I make it bespoke as well. So if you've got like a theme or an idea in mind, I can look for the fabric, get it printed, and yeah, make something specially for the little one's wardrobe. <laughs> and what kind of things are people asking for at the moment? What's the, what's, the, what's the big theme at the moment? Safari themes, very popular for new babies. Maybe like a sleep suit or a romper. And how's business going? Yeah, it's really busy. I'm getting lots of pre-orders. I like um, doing my pre-orders so I'm not making stock so I find it more sustainable because then you're just making to order and it's exactly what the customer wants. You know that's going to sell. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then I've got the fabric there so they could actually got the choice and they know it's made specially for them. And tell me about the fabric because it's, uh, as you might expect with kids' clothes, it's super soft. I'm loving the lion outfit oh, here. I you. love that fabric. So it's all cotton mixed with 5% elastin, so the spandex, so it's super soft soft and it washes well I've also got a pre-love site so all like sometimes people give me the clothes back or my daughter's clothes go on the pre-love so then I give them away for yeah free it must be very difficult making clothes getting in the orders chasing up invoices running your books running a family as well you've got three kids a hugely busy life yeah but I really enjoy it it doesn't feel like work it's a massive passion I just can't get enough of it I just feel like oh I need a break but then I start sewing again and yeah that's it <laughs> and whereabouts are you based how can um, people get in touch I'm in Rygate but I'm online and on Instagram so it's creativelyemmy.com and then on Instagram under creativelyemmy Okay. Cool. Rosanna, Lovely thanks so you. much indeed. Thank you, Thank you. So we'll move on and uh, we're going up to Nutfield Dairy and Matt is here and uh, I'm immediately taken by your lovely pre-wrapped cheese boards with chutney and with cheese as well. That's right. You've got a good marketing idea going on here, Matt. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And that's a nice slurry made chutney as well. But we're based in South Nutfield. So we've just got a little dairy farm. We milk about 25 cows. And we make two types of cheeses. We make it Surrey Red, which is based on a French Alpine style of cheese, and a cheddar type, which is called Green Sambray, which we've named after the Green Sand Ridge that runs along the top of our farm. And also, you've got some Surrey Red here. Yes. I'm going to take uh, a, a cube of this. on the t yeah. Tell me what I'm, what, what I'm expecting to taste. It's a sort of a semi-hard, semi-soft cheese. It's got a bit of a tang to it. It's a continental style. We don't press it so it's not too hard, whereas the green sambray is, uh, is obviously a hard cheese, it's a cheddar type and it's much stronger. This is a little bit more mild than that. The green sambray is a nice strong cheese, it's got a nice strong aftertaste to it and that one's gone down very well because I've sold out. <laughs> and is this all part of uh, diversification with the dairy farm? We're very small scale anyway and for us it's how we farm that's important. We farm uh, what's called regeneratively, so we're all about soil health. I mean the soil is the main thing we've got to combat climate change really it's what will sequester carbon I'm, I'm going to uh, break off because <laughs> there's someone giving you some money to buy yeah. some cheese James, oh, thank you very much thank, thank, you. Nice. thank you very much it's very nice um, our food is only as good as the soil it comes from so we're really trying to go for our soil health and make a really nice nutrient dense food that's sustainable environmentally and what else have we got here? We've got some yoghurts down here as well. That's right, yeah. We make a, a live Greek-style yoghurt. We do five flavours. We do natural, strawberry, raspberry, black cherry and apricot. So it's all made by me and my partner on our, on our farm. Again, it sounds, it sounds a huge amount of work that you're doing. I, I guess you must enjoy it, but it must be tough as well. Yeah, it is a hellish amount of work because we've got the farming side, which is a job in itself, processing and then spending the weekends selling it is long hours and, and you do have to enjoy it but we do luckily it's me and my partner and um, we've got a little son he can be involved to an extent and um, yeah yeah it's, it's, it's not a bad life it's not a bad life and do you notice that there's more sustainability coming through in farming nowadays is that kind oh, of picking up 
Yeah, definitely. We have still got a long way to go, but people are much more aware of it now, and that nature-friendly side of things is certainly coming through. And Our slogan is Nutfield Dairy, Cow Saving the Planet, because cows are one of the best tools we have to improving soil health. Cows get a bit of a bad press, though, don't they? They do, absolutely, yeah, yeah. But it's not the cows, it's how we farm them. That's what needs to be changed. I I, I read a good quote the other day, and it was, we all know that the cars aren't good for the environment because they're bellowing out carbon. But nobody's seriously saying, let's get rid of cars. They're saying, let's change how we power them. And it's that same attitude we need in farming. It's it's how we do it, how we... How we, how we produce food, that's the, uh, that's the key. So can people come along to you or do they catch up with you at fairs and other events? At the moment we're mostly at fairs and events. We do supply a lot of uh, local farm shops, butchers, delis, that sort of thing. Priory Farm sell a lot of our products and we have just got planning permission to convert one of our farm buildings into a, into a little farm shop. So we're hoping to have that up and going by the springtime. But we're on socials, Instagram, Facebook, that sort of thing. So. And what's your address on all those places? Nutfield Dairy, Braze Farm. OK, Matt, thank you very much indeed. Thank they look great. Them. Thank you so much. And walking out past uh, a few more stalls, we're really concentrating on the stalls that are in the Planet Rygate area, so RH12 and, uh, and 3. And Mia is here from Spin pre-loved fashion. Hi Mia. Hi, how are you? I'm, I'm very good, I'm very good. And good. how is business going? What, what have we got here? What, what are you selling? So the principle of my business is a true circular fashion module. So we have some new, some pre-loved, some vintage fashion. So it's about saving clothes from landfill, making sure that we're doing everything sustainable for the planet. Really good. I'm, obviously the whole theme of this fair, of this market, is sustainability. Absolutely. And you've got a whole range of things here. I yeah, can see some so gloves. We need the gloves we at this do time need of gloves. year. So some of the um, uh, people that I work with are local, um, independent, sustainable businesses as well. So here we've got some handmade alpaca okay. and wool, sustainable fingerless gloves and snoods. It's just yeah about making sure that we're supporting independent businesses, but in the most sustainable way. Okay, and also we've got some bags. We've got some... Yeah, these are handmade Italian leather handbags that are just excess stock, which means we can supply them at a quarter of the recommended retail price. That so makes them amazing value what we're trying to do is just make sure we're offering something really amazing at amazing prices rrp 155 down to 40 yeah Yeah. just because they're excess stock there's nothing wrong with them it's just that when the designer has to bring in a new collection she has to make space so she passes them on to me and then i can offer them amazing prices excellent and is there there's more stuff behind you got some rails of clothes and some shoes we don't mind really what the brand is as long as it's in amazing condition so we do everything really from the high street up to high end so we've got all brands in all sizes as long as it's in amazing condition it's not a jumble sale is it absolutely we are the um, antithesis of that everything there's no stains there's no marks there's no missing buttons everything is in beautiful condition and actually a lot of our stuff is new with tags so does that mean that when you get it in you have to you have to double check it you've got to give it a, a good clean you've got to repair Ev- perhaps i hand pick everything and are you noticing there's more interest in this i mean there's a lot of interest in in, in your vintage and so on isn't there yeah so- but that's actually more interested in in just buying sustainably and then by passing on the clothes that you've perhaps never worn or you've only worn once what we're all doing is finding out that actually we don't have to be constantly buying new, we don't have to be constantly consuming new product. There's plenty of stuff out there in amazing condition. We just have to be more conscious and rewear. And yeah, we don't have to be buying cheap, fast fashion. It's about the antithesis of that and just making more of what we've all got in our wardrobes and moving it about. I'm always head to toe in pre-love, second hand, whatever you want to call it, and I never feel like I'm underdressed. I always feel like I'm really well presented, and that's what we're trying to do is just tell everyone how amazing pre-love clothing is and that you can get amazing prices, amazing quality, you just don't have to be buying new. Can people come and see this stuff for themselves? Yes, can they come so down to I you have, in Hawley? Yes, I have my own shop in Hawley um, that's open Tuesdays to Saturdays. And I do a live sale on Instagram every Thursday night as well. So making it as accessible as possible to as many people as possible. Big following on Instagram where people buy off the grid and my post out. So we're making it very, very inclusive. You're going to be finding things which perhaps have, have finished their run. You won't be able to find anywhere else because... Right. 
yeah. maybe they were a short run anyway, or yeah. it's a slightly different style, or it's something yeah. from a couple of years back. But if it suits you, exactly and it's a good that. price, exactly and you're helping the planet, that. it all works out. Exactly it? that, yeah. So some of the things, yeah, I like things that are a bit different. So you'll find a lot of things that are a bit edgy, a bit quirky. But then you've got your wardrobe staples as well. But there are some people that like to turn their wardrobes around a lot and then they pass that stuff on to me so you can still get things that are current season that but fast that wow fast. so you will find quite a lot of the stock in my shop that you can still find either online or in store where is the shop just off um, the high street in Hawley on Yatterdon Road it's a tiny little shop that you think there's nothing in it but when you get in it's like a TARDIS <laughs> so it's the most amazing cute little shop so I encourage everyone to visit so this is uh, clothes and shoes and bags and jewellery as well it's all pre yeah. If you're and looking have, up for um, a spin pre-loved. Yeah, and some local stockists of all sorts of different handmade gifts as well. So, yeah, we've got a little bit of everything in the shop. So we're spin underscore pre-loved, and we do a live sale every Thursday at 5 o'clock with all the new in items. So that's the first part of our series of interviews with various stallholders at the Sustainability Market in Rygate. More from some other stallholders there in next week's edition of the show. On the way... Pilgrim Brewery, news on the loos and the cafes in Priory and Memorial Park, more charges at Gatwick, local OBE success and sporting success, a new restaurant coming to Rygate, and also our brand new feature with a brand new co-host. Into 2024 on the Planet Rygate podcast. Okay, so let's look at some of those news events which have been happening over the last seven days, or which don't actually fit into the category of our good time guide. So the Environment Agency has said it's launched an investigation after sewage spilled onto a public footpath near Hawley. Yeah, the treatment works at Hawley overflowed on Tuesday when the River Mole burst its banks during Storm Henk. The Environment Agency said the spill was completely unacceptable and the local parish council leader said Thames Water her promised action after a similar spill in November. The companies apologised and promised to clean up the area and in a statement the Environment Agency said we're aware of the ongoing situation at the sewage treatment works at Hawley. It's completely unacceptable. We've recorded non-compliances against Thames Water for breaching their permit and our officers are actively investigating the incident. We've also made it clear that we require the water company to complete the previously recommended major infrastructure works for this site. Pilgrim Brewery has applied to Rygate and Banstead Borough Council for planning permission to replace the brewery and tap room and renovate the store at their base on West Street. Now, the brewery says there have been some concerns raised about the plans, including that it isn't really going to be a brewery and that it'll become noisier and more like a Weatherspoons. They say, firstly, the plans will allow for a more efficient brewery and the higher ceilings will allow for a larger brewing capacity. Quote, We estimate that we will be able to double production with the new facility and have flexibility to further increase capacity if necessary. We also intend to make the site quieter with an electric forklift powered by solar panels on the storeroom and with a greater indoor space, there'll be no need to have any events outside. Finally, anyone who knows Pilgrim Brewery and the care that it is taken with our beers and brand will know that the idea of making it into a Weatherspoons couldn't be further from the truth. In a statement issued on their Facebook page, Pilgrim says... We're part of the local community and the increased space will allow for us to continue to host community meetings such as those for Rygate Business Guild, the Rotary, the Round Table and Camera, as well as for wakes, anniversaries, christenings, fundraisers and birthdays. Now, if you want to check out the Pilgrim application yourself, you can go to the Borough Council's website and search for 23 slash 02155 slash F on the planning application search page that you can view all of the supporting information there. 
Well, the Gatwick forecourt drop-off charge has gone up. Yeah, the minimum charge to use the designated drop-off zones is going to be going up from £5 to £6. In fact, it happened this past week. You can pay online, over the phone, or by setting up an auto-pay account. You can still drop off for free in the long-stay car parks. Mm, Not terribly useful, apart from the fact that someone can then get one of those shuttle buses to the main terminus, of course. So that's the North and South Terminal and also social media posts saying it'll be collecting from the railway station there as well. So up from £5 to £6 to drop off or to pick up. Congratulations to Red Hill's own England's World Cup captain Millie Bright. Yes, she lives in Red Hill. Gobsmack, she says, to learn she was being made an OBE in the New Year's Honours list. She was initially worried that the letter confirming the accolade was a parking fine. Yeah, the 30-year-old Chelsea defender who got engaged to her partner Levi Crew on Christmas Day while on holiday in Mauritius was elated to get the OBE but feared the worst to begin with. She's quoted as saying, Gobsmacked! It's something you never imagined, something that never crossed my mind. A knee injury suffered in March, threatened to rule her out of the World Cup, of course, and uh, meant she missed the run-in as her club won a fourth successive Women's Super League title. But ultimately, she recovered and skippered the Lionesses. She said, quote, Overall, the year's been incredible. Winning trophies, leading the girls out in a World Cup final. There are moments that come once in a lifetime, and you never know when you're going to get the next moment. That's the thing with football. Nothing's granted. But that's part of the chase, and hopefully 2024 brings the same, if not better. A few other stories to come. First of all, Yaprak, a small chain of Turkish restaurants, are going to be opening a branch of the former Island House restaurant on the High Street in Rygate. Ah, Island House. I know it well. Uh, Yeah, the Yaprak website describes the brand as tasty, authentic foods and a warm, welcoming, elegant atmosphere for all day dining. The Island House site, you'll remember, has been empty since... uh, Uh, Island House left there in January last year. It was there since August 2020. And before Island House, just thinking back, it was Ask, wasn't it? The Italian restaurant. Of course, another Turkish restaurant, Hatay, moved into the town earlier on this year in Church Street. And Turkish chain Cappadocia plans to open at the former Abbott in Red Hill later on this year. Still with food, the family-run firm operating the temporary kiosk in front of the Priory Park Cafe, Creamy BTB Catering, has confirmed that it is the new leaseholder of the building itself. And they're planning a grand reopening in March. The firm says, quote, The revitalised space will feature a dynamic blend of casual quick bites and a cosy sit-down atmosphere, providing options for those on the go and those seeking a more relaxed dining experience. I would have thought they'd be pretty hard-pressed to fit those two different ideas within that rather small unit there in Priory Park. But the firm says any name change will reflect our dedication providing an enhanced and distinctive experience. Details on that story via Rygate.uk and their website there. And that's the same source for our next item, Rygate. Dot UK Subscribe via that website. A petition to reopen toilets in Rygate and Banstead Parks with access separate from the accompanying cafes has been rejected by the Borough Council's Executive Committee. Now that means that when the cafes reopen next year, use of the toilets in Memorial Park in Red Hill are going to be limited to when the cafes actually open because there's no separate entrance. And in contrast, the Priory Park toilets will have separate public access and likely longer hours because that's what happened before. Temporary toilets will continue to be provided at Memorial and Priory Park until those new cafes buildings reopen. Lila Unwin has been formally invited by UK Athletics to compete in the UK Athletics Indoor Championships in Birmingham on the 17th and 18th of February. Congratulations to Lila. Uh, She's uh, got the qualifying time for the women's 800 metres and is going to be taking a place with the top 800 metre runners in the UK. Rygate Priory Athletics Club, of which she is a member, says it's a massive achievement by the 17-year-old Lila and reward for her committed and dedicated approach to her running. Yeah, congratulations, Lila. And we'll keep our fingers crossed for your training and your success at that event. The Bell in Outwood 
say they want your once-loved Christmas trees for their wassail bonfire on Saturday the 3rd of February at the Bell. You can pop them in their fenced area in the corner of the car park and Andy's going to make use of them to make wassail 2024 a fantastic night. So wassail 2024 is on Saturday, February the 3rd at the Bell. Made any New Year's resolutions? Well, how about improving on mental and physical health through volunteering? The Woodcraft Folk Movement is a local youth group that needs more adult volunteers for their Tuesday night group nights and camps. They do things like craft activities, play games, sing, go on night walks and lots of other things, learning about the world as they go. It's a kind of more eco version of the Scouts by the sound of it, doesn't it? Now, you don't need to know anything about woodcraft, but it would help if you're interested in inspiring children and young people to make the future bright. Training and support will be given. You can find out more via woodcraftfolk.org. Dot UK. And if you're interested in finding out more locally, you can email Rygate and Redhill Woodcraft Folk at gmail.com. The Big Community Day 2024, as run by Merston Football Club, is on Saturday the 27th of July. Now, yes, that is advance notice for a good time guide event, but advance notice if you want to get involved, have a stall, perform, you can email them at info at merstonfc.com. And Simon Pinto says, I run a local Red Hill Beaver Scout colony and we're constantly on the lookout for interesting visitors to come along and talk to our colony about interesting stuff. They are six to eight years old, so interactive stuff works best. So if you've got something, maybe it's a skill, maybe it's a musical instrument, maybe it's an, an exciting holiday or adventure, maybe you have a really interesting and unusual job, then why don't you get in touch with Simon? He posted that appeal on Twitter or X at Simon underscore I underscore Pinto. Simon underscore letter I underscore Pinto. And tell him you heard about it on the Planet Rygate podcast. Okay, we're just uh, waiting for the uh, the weather to come through now. News and weather together on the Planet Rygate podcast. Just coming through oh by the way on the way a brand new there we go a brand new feature for the show in a few moments time not hosted by me but by our very own ai presenter roberta the planet rygate robot it's uh it's she who asks the questions in our new interview slot where we hear what people like you love about living life here in the planet rygate area yeah, Rygate Roulette is on the way on the Planet Rygate podcast, the first outing for that. Yeah, so our weather from Professor Weather. It's been wet and windy, hasn't it, this past week or so. Maximum local gusts on December the 30th, 32 miles an hour in Rygate, 43 miles an hour in Charlwood. And on January the 2nd, so, uh, so last Tuesday, Gatwick, 56 miles an hour. At round about 20 past three and then uh, an hour and a half later at uh, 4 45 41 mile an hour winds recorded in Rygate. Start of a new year of course 2024 so let's look back at the almanac for 2023 courtesy of Professor Weather. Not really a shock but it was the wettest year Professor Weather has ever recorded with 1099.2 millimetres of rain that's a 41% increase on the average of 777.5 millimetres. The previous high, 927.7 millimetres of rain in 2012. We recorded locally an air frost 39 days in 2023, which was the same as 2022 and was below average, so 44 days. And finally, this from the Weather Almanac from Professor Weather on the Planet Rygate podcast. It was the fourth mildest year we've recorded with a one minute mean temperature of 11.6 celsius welcome to rygate roulette on the planet rygate podcast my name is roberta i am the rygate roulette robot i want to find out more about what you love about living here i'm chris and i live in rygate spin the wheel to play and i'll ask you a question What are your childhood memories of growing up here? 
Uh, I think my first memory is uh, playing in Priory Park, um, football in the tennis courts um, and the basketball court, yeah, with my friends whilst I was at school. What is your favourite local pub? Uh, probably the market, um, just because that's where I, me and my mates always used to go on a night out um, in Rygate when I was young. And yeah, it's always good in the centre of town. Yeah, they have music and some other events like comedy nights and stuff like that. Um, yeah, and so, like, they usually have some good food in there as well, it's all good. What here is most underrated? Uh, most underrated, I'd say, is the Dexter Burger milkshake. Um, the Oreo milkshake there is by far the best I've had. Where do you go locally for a culture fix? Uh, for a culture fix, I probably go to the comedy night at uh, the Harlequin. Um, yeah, me and my mates used to, uh, go there quite a lot, so yeah, that's where I'd go. Yeah, you see all the big ones do it, like trying out new stuff there, which is quite good, and you see some not so good, but yeah, it's all good. <laughs> What is your favourite local view? Uh, probably this one, where we are now, uh, looking over the football pitch at Park Lane. Um, yeah, probably my favourite view. Just reminds me of playing football. Um, yeah, just yeah, where I want to be every Saturday. What makes you smile when you come home from abroad? I think, yeah, just driving through the town and then on the way to the football club, I think just seeing Rygate itself, um, driving past Morrison's, through the high street, just makes you feel you're at home. Yeah. Thanks for playing the Rygate roulette game. I loved your answers. I will be back next week but before I go here is one of my favorite robot jokes. What is our 2D2 short for? Because it has little legs. Ha 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 ha. You've been a great audience. I'm Roberta the Rygate roulette robot. Goodbye. Planet Rygate stars, thanking local heroes who are out of this world. And more from Roberta in next week's episode of the Planet Rygate podcast. Yeah, our brand new co-presenter. Okay, yeah, stars, Planet Rygate stars, our local heroes. And uh, please remember, you can subscribe to the show so you don't miss an episode. You can do this via your favourite podcast app, of course. So these stars for this week, first of all, to the really lovely member of staff in H&M and Vodafone. Quote, I can't thank you both enough for helping me when I lost my phone today. The reason I was so emotional was because of all the photos of my mum on there who's recently passed away. Thank you for being so kind and helpful and patient with me. I'm an idiot who left the phone in the car, but wasn't thinking straight. I haven't for a while since mum. I really hope you see this post so you know how grateful I am for how you treated me. Kindness goes a long way. That's very special, actually, that message, isn't it? Members of staff in HMM and Vodafone. Also, big shout out to the two men who helped us pushing our stuck car out of mud today at Priory Farm Estate. You are our heroes. Thank you very much. And one more also to do with cars. Hello, Rygate. Yesterday morning, my car broke down in the middle of Chart Lane as I was driving my parents to the hospital. I'd like you to help me say a big thank you to Matt. All I know is he lives in Salfords and had just celebrated his wife's birthday. Matt literally rescued us and his kindness I'm truly grateful for. If anyone out there knows Matt, please could you tell him what a superstar he is. Thanks so much. Hidden Treasure on the Planet Rygate podcast. This week's Hidden Treasure item is a real departure from those that were featured in 2023. You could say it's a happy new year. So from all of us at the Children's Trust Rygate, very best wishes to you all. Thank you so much for your support last year and for those donations that we're already receiving and custom in 2024. So to our item, they're size seven, they're red, they're satin, they've got platform soles. Yes, it's a pair of shoes. 
So they're by KG, by Kurt Geiger. So a really re- re- well-known brand. Um, made of man-made materials, but they absolutely look a million dollars. They look also like they've probably only been worn once. So they have silk floral corsages on an elastic band and these are removable so actually um, to have a a plainer finish or this very dramatic um, corsage adornment but these um, corsages can be removed so accessorizing up the item even further so you accentuating an outfit for example they have two flowers on each of these with very delicate small cream beaded stamens now these shoes then not just any shoes they are five inches high so the type of shoes that you wear to something special somewhere you don't have to do too much walking so it's not a a hike across the park um, with the dog um, or playing a game of football with the kids for example so they also this little platform heel it's a very delicate one so again a little bit of height it's um, one and a half inches high now the lining's black uh, man-made material so the shoes themselves are very special they looking to advertise these for 40 pounds so we haven't got the box for them but i think if you just put them in a a soft cloth bag or something pop them to the back of the wardrobe until you have that opportunity um, to really feel very special in them and it's the type of item that um, if you you get that special wear or two out of them that you might re-donate it just feels like these shoes will have many stories to tell in years to come now the um, donations that are coming into us are so so important they make such a difference at the children's trust to the children and young people that we support with brain injury now we have had some intermittent trading recently uh, which we we know may disappoint some of our supporters bringing items to us but please bear with us if you're coming a long distance and you're not sure whether the shop will be open please give us a call now the um, staff sickness our very best wishes are to our team members and um and just the thanks for everybody's support for rallying around um, to keep our shop open, to continue to provide such a wonderful um, community shop full of hidden treasures for you. So we hope to see you all soon, but please be bear with us through this um, sort of inconsistent um, trading period that we've had. Um, we're, we're still raising an amazing amount of money to support children with brain injury. And we're here for you through 2020 and beyond. Thank you very much for all your support. This is the Planet Rygate podcast. I'm Peter Stewart. Thank you so much for the loan of your ears. Oh, by the way, if one of your New Year's resolutions is to get fit for the new year, then don't forget that in episode 14, we had a special money off code for Rygate Ladies Joggers. So go back and listen to what that was. Episode 14 of the show, the Planet Rygate Podcast. Into 2024 on the Planet Rygate Podcast. Okay, that's probably the last time I can play that, isn't it? Okay, we've got our 60-second soundscape on the way to finish the show before we go. It's from Gatton Park. Oh, by the way, over the next few weeks, well, next week, we've got the second part of our chat with stallholders at the Rygate Sustainability Market. And then let's have a look down here later on in the month. Uh, Yeah, we've got the Unison Choir are featured. You've heard them, now hear about them. In February, we've got a local ukulele player who runs practice training sessions and also we'll be hearing from a local dance group as well. Plus, next week, another guest in Rygate Roulette will be playing that. Okay, so before we go, it is our 60-second soundscape from Gatton Park. Now, obviously, it's kind of winter. We thought snow, but snow doesn't make much noise, does it? So I thought, okay, well, let's turn the tables completely and let's have summer rain. Yeah, this was recorded back in the summer on the Gatton Park estate. 
between Reigate and Red Hill. The 60 Second Soundscape. Local natural sounds uninterrupted. <laughs>